Good day to you as we head into a very different segment of the class. We're done with the posts, we're done with the RSC posts, we're done with the country media posts. We've laid the groundwork now for heading into the final phase of the class, which is about the research paper. It's about the research paper, which is combined with a smaller assignment designed to help you with the research paper. That smaller assignment is called the research proposal. The proposal is worth 10 points and the paper is worth 20 points. And that's what we're gonna be working on for the rest of the semester, really. And here's how it's gonna go. So for today, I'm gonna to cover the two assignments in this instructor video. I'm gonna cover the, the paper first so that you have a, the complete view of the assignment. <clears throat> Then I'm going to come back and I'm going to cover the research proposal. As far as our next few scheduled classes go, today's Tuesday. On Thursday, you're going to have an assignment due that is called the research proposal, the one that I mentioned. That's going to be due on Thursday. So that's going to be your next assignment for the class. No more posts for the class, okay? Now, after that, we're going to have research consultation meetings. Research consultation meetings, those are meetings where you and I speak either by phone or in person. Either way is fine with me. I'm going to be holding those hours at the Monroe building and also at the at the McGarry building where the radio station is. So please make sure when you sign up for a day, which I'm going to be telling you how to do shortly, that you note which place I'm going to be and or which phone number you need to call. All right, so let's start first with, with scheduling those meetings. Let's mention to that Marina is going to be the person, our secretary, who will schedule your research paper consultations. And once again, those are gonna start taking place the Tuesday before Thanksgiving, and then some classes after Thanksgiving, two classes after Thanksgiving. You need to have your research paper consultation scheduled by this Thursday at one o'clock. So that's a second assignment for you. So you have two assignments due by Thursday, you have the proposal, and you need to have had scheduled, already set up with Marina, a time that you and I can, can meet to discuss your research paper. We're going to look at your variables. We're going to refine anything that you've written about in your proposal that needs to, to be focused more so that you can complete your research paper. This is a research process. We're going through that process now. It will take us through the end of the semester, and that's in keeping with the 400 level class. A 400 level class is supposed to be original research, and you're gonna be creating your own research. You're gonna be studying your own country and comparing it to another country. So let's take a look. Let's take a look at what this assignment is all about, starting with the research paper assignment. And if you have that open, it's a document that is under content, and this document is also accompanied by a document that is the research proposal guidelines. Both of the guidelines for these two assignments are under the content tab. And you also have sample research proposals and sample research papers that students have done in the past that have embodied excellent work. So you have the roadmap in front of you to complete this final assignment, which is worth 30 points in the class. All right, so taking on this this assignment now, the hard copy of it, <clears throat> the purpose of this assignment is for you to study a, quote, social theme between two samples of comparative media content, which is to say two media programs. It could be a television show. It could be a radio song. <clears throat> it could be a documentary. Those are all examples of programs. Or your media content could be a publication. It could be a traditional publication like a newspaper you buy in the store or a magazine or a newsletter. All of those are game for this class. Or your publication could be an online publication like Slate or like uh, the Daily Beast. Those are news publications or the Huffington Post um, and the comparable one that you'd be studying from another country. So whatever you choose, your media content wise, you're going to be comparing it from the United States versus comparing it in another country, the one that you've studied all semester long. And so you're really ready to go with your basic research. Now, if you get hung up on those words social theme, that's because you're not trusting your own abilities. <clears throat> social theme is a term that I have invented. You're not gonna find it out there. It's not the same as social media. Social media is a term that I'm using to describe commentary about the society of the country that you are studying. The commentary is coming from the media content that you're gonna be comparing. So ultimately, even though we're studying media content in this research paper, by the time we get to the very end of it, we're wanting to make really big observations about the country, the culture, and the people themselves, which give rise to the media content. 
So examples of content that you could study include comparing two comedy shows to determine what topics or people can or cannot be made fun of in each country. And then what does that tell us about the sensitive areas of society, those areas that are off limits, as well as those, those areas of society that you can take liberty with in the comedy? That's what we're trying to get to in a study like this. Or another example is comparing two women's magazines, one from your country, one from the U.S., to determine what features are portrayed as making a woman, quote, beautiful or a man beautiful. And finally, comparing two radio newscasts to determine what country has more negative news versus positive news in it. And there's one more example that I put in the handout here that you can take a look at with films. So it's commentary that's arising out of the media content that you're going to compare, be comparing based on your analysis, right? Your own original thinking. And that's going to be what the social theme is that you're going to be comparing between the two countries in this paper. So then there's a, it's going to be due the, the final week of class. Um, I'll set a date for that. The paper itself will be 13 to 15 pages double spaced and it must be checked for spelling mistakes and carefully proofread some of the work that has been submitted in this class this semester is definitely not worthy of a 400 level senior level class and i hope some of you who have been turning in that kind of work are not going to be turning in that kind of work for this paper it should be very carefully edited your paper also should be broken into different categories, and those includes the headings below, so below on your worksheet here, on your guidelines, hard copy, I should say. The introduction is going to be one to two pages long. In this introduction, you're orienting the reader to your study, right? That's what you do in any introduction. So in this particular one, what I want you to do is to identify two media programs or the publications that you are studying. Let me know right away. Explain why you selected them. What is of interest to you about them? Is it something that you watched as a kid? Was it something that your mother has read? Have you always wanted to know about news in this country? What is driving you to select the media content? And then what you should do is identify why the two programs are good to compare. What is significant about them? What makes them important? What makes your analysis of them a big deal because of what we can find out? Next up, identify the social theme that you want to study. Identify the social theme. You're going to have to name it and define it. It is, quote, for example, how the average family is depicted in these two films. That's a social theme, average family. That's what society comments on. If a family is doing these things, they are an average family in the United States versus the other country based on the media content you're looking at. Then give me some background. Give me some background on the two programs or the two publications that you've selected. You don't need to go into super great detail. I don't need to see like pages of all the actors and all the shows that they've been in. I don't need to see that. I just need to know some background that helps me understand what's unusual, or what's different about the, this particular area of media content that you've chosen, what makes it special. You know, give me a little bit of background. You, if you want to give me the typical plot, if it's a, a drama, that, that's going to be helpful. So again, it's about orienting the reader to your research project. <clears throat> now, after you finish the introduction section, <clears throat> excuse me, next comes the literature review. It's a section that many students have difficulty with. And that is because it's misunderstood what a literature review is all about. A literature review is so that you look at past researchers' work so that your work can benefit from that work so that you are not repeating what somebody has already done, and so that secondly, you know what directions you're going in that are unique to your study, which are again, benefiting from what other people have studied. So the literature review is two to three pages, and you are going to read five academic journal articles or five academic books. Five academic journal articles or five academic books. If you don't know what academic journal articles are, then I suggest that you speak to the librarian, the reference librarian at Kemp Library. They are, by the way, very helpful and will help you locate academic, specific academic journal articles if you need that assistance. An academic journal is a blind reviewed journal. It's where work is submitted. It is reviewed anonymously that nobody knows the author. The author doesn't know the reviewers and the work is evaluated purely on its merits. And it is a producing scholarship and knowledge that then helps us further our understanding 
of subjects like this, comparative media. So in your literature review, you're going to summarize the five studies that you found in these journal articles or in the books, and then you're going to say how each of those studies has informed the design of your study. You're going to do that either by saying in, for the next section, which is called the variable section, that this variable comes from this previous study, or you're going to use the literature that you're, that you're reviewing in your conclusion, where you come back and you explain the bigger picture about what your media content says about your, home, your, your foreign country plus the United States. And here's why that is explainable, because we earlier learned from a previous person's study that X, Y, and Z happens in this country. Now, throughout all of your writings, by the way, in this paper, please feel free to bring in any of the knowledge that you have learned from our readings in the class, cultural characteristics, financing, regulation, etc. But do not cite my book as a source for your research. That would be considered lazy research. That's trying to put something you've already read into the five sources that we're directing you to. All right, so after we do the literature review, we're going to go on to the variable section. Variable section number three, that's one to two pages long. This is where you're going to name three variables that you will use to research your social theme. Try and look at it as your social theme is a thing here. And if you were to break it into three pieces, this is what comes out in terms of your variables. So the three pieces for a social theme that's based on the average family, you can have many different pieces that might break that down, but maybe one piece might be the living room conversations. Do the conversations that take place in this sitcom versus the foreign sitcom that speak about the family in a living room, just the way that they talk, is that an average, that saying that this society, that this is what an average family does in this society? So when you're looking at a social theme, it might break down into living room conversations for one variable. A second variable that it might break down to, into might be eating situations, eating at a dinner table, eating at a breakfast table. A third variable that you might take a look at is the way that the family plays together. Do they play together at all? Do they play board games? Do they go to sporting events? Do they go out and spend time walking around having fun? That's playing. Right, this is just one way that you could divide up that social theme into three separate variables. That's what you're doing in this section, this variable section. <clears throat> now, in order to complete the section properly, you need to define what each variable means. So if you say living room conversation, you need to, to write a couple sentences about what encapsulates a living room conversation. You're not getting into the comparisons here, okay? Don't start your comparisons in the variable section. Don't start talking about the differences in the two sitcoms that you looked at in, your two, in the two countries. Now, here you're just laying out the definition of what constitutes a living room conversation, if that's the variable. You can get more ideas from variables by looking at the sample documents that I've posted online. When we meet, next week or after Thanksgiving, this is primarily what we're gonna be talking about is your variables. So make sure that you have them named, make sure you have them defined, and finally, make sure that you describe the categories of information that each variable covers. What categories of conversation does living room conversation cover in order to be talking about the family? Does it have to cover about kids sharing boyfriend, girlfriend stories with parents? Does it have to do with parents discussing job opportunities for kids? Does it have to do with kids taking something from parents and not returning it? What, what are the scenarios that are going to, to describe the categories of information for a living room conversation? I hope you follow me there. All right, next up is the heart and the soul of your paper. It's that fourth section. It's your comparisons. Now you're going to discuss the findings for each variable. Variable one, living room conversation. Variable two, kitchen, conver kitchen conversation. Variable three, the way that families play together. You're gonna to have that all laid out neatly in your comparison section. It's gonna be four to five pages. This is where you're going to be quoting lines from your TV show or your film or your newspaper or your website. You may include appendices, by the way, I'll mention those more in a moment, but at the end, if you have a lot of stuff that comes together, like maybe you have three pages of graphics, don't jam those in the middle of the paper. That's why you have an appendix section, put them at the end. But you might refer to them here in your comparisons. Basically in the section, the comparison section, you're making comparisons <clears throat> between the two countries, media programs or publications. <clears throat> 
So you provide quotes, graphics, plot lines, imagery, and other examples of the media content so, so that you're supporting the statements that you're making. You were saying that the, the Canadian television news program that you looked at tended to have more environmental issues in the newscast than the American newscast that you looked at, the American newscast that you looked at. What are the examples of the environmental issues in the Canadian newscast? Give me examples. That's all goes in the comparison section. Which leaves you with the final section, the conclusion section. Again, this is the second place that you'll be using your literature review. The first place is to say, oh, the literature that I reviewed, this particular study helped me with this variable. Now here's the second place in your conclusions. You can start to make observations in the conclusions, which is one to two pages long, the conclusion section, where you're summarizing the major findings of your paper. What are the major findings? And then most importantly, you're going to explain what the findings say about each country's culture. And that's where you may need help from your liter literature review. And you're also gonna be drawing on your own, own knowledge of studying this culture, studying this country's culture all semester long. You have the ability, because you know about how the media are financed in that country, how the media are regulated, how accessible the media are. You have knowledge here that you should be applying in your conclusion. Next up, if you have them, are appendices. Appendices can include photos of characters. It can include a masthead of newspapers, if you know what that is, says what, who the editor is, etc. It can include the timeline of a plot and other visual things can go in the appendices. Then finally, in this paper, you have a bibliography. The bibliography is where you cite all of the sources that you have used to research and write this research paper. Your reference section must follow very, very uh, carefully a particular style guide. Hopefully you know what that means. There are different style guides for research. You have the MLA style guide. You have the APA style guide. You have the Chicago Manual of Style Guide. Those are the three big ones used in academic research. You must be following one of those. Again, if you are not familiar with those, you'll need to consult with the reference librarian at East Stroudsburg's library, Kemp Library. All right, so now how does the, how does the proposal fit into this? The proposal is designed to get you jump started on this thing. It's designed to get you to have uh, some feedback early on, formal feedback from me, so that you don't go forward with your paper and complete it in directions that are off the target. And so let's talk about that research proposal, which is due in two days. It's due at one o'clock on Thursday. It's worth 10 points. And in this, I'm trying to get you to do a couple components will, that will then be plugged in to your research per paper. So here's the purpose of a research proposal. It's to orient the researcher. That's you. Don't forget, you're a researcher. To, towards a research area that can be investigated by comparing two samples of media content, one from a foreign country, one from the USA. A research proposal sets the parameters of the study so that the researcher can proceed to study a phenomenon with a tight focus. And it's a fancy way of saying we're trying to get you to focus in this assignment. It's going to be double spaced and two pages long, the research proposal. It's going to consist of three sections. The first section is going to be an introduction, which should sound very familiar to you because it's going to include an opening statement about why you're studying these media. It's going to be identifying two media programs or publications you want to study. It's going to be identifying why the two programs or publications are appropriate to compare. And it's going to be identifying the social theme that you are studying. So that should all sound very familiar because it's just like the intro for the research paper. Section two of your proposal is going to be the literature that you have identified for review. You, you, cannot, you are not expected to have read it by Thursday, but you are expected to have found your research sources. You must have those found out by the time that you, that you post your uh, research proposal on Thursday. They, they must be cited in there bibliographically in this section, the five sources that you're gonna be studying, books and journal articles. And then thirdly, this is the part that changes the most between the research proposal and the research paper, and that is the speculation part of the research proposal. Speculation, in this section, I want you to speculate what you expect to find in terms of the major similarities and the major differences between the media of the two countries that you're studying. And I want you to explain why you expect to find these findings based on your reasoning, on what you know about the two countries, or from the readings, 
or from your own personal experience. This is designed to get you in that research mode, thinking about what might I find? I may not find it though. That's what makes you an academic research, by the way, is when you can not find what you're expecting to find. You're supposed to be unbiased to an extent, at least in terms of your findings. So there you have it. This is where we're headed the next couple of days. I know that there's a lot to digest here. Make, make sure that you remember that you have these documents for guiding you through these, these two assignments, as well as excellent samples from other students in this class. They're all online under the content tab. If you have any questions, just let me know. Have a great day.